Hey guys, this is Alan and to, in today's episode I'm going to show you how to grow and plant a bonanza peach. If you're looking for a dwarf variety, a peach specifically, this is the one to get. Now this tree will take full sun anywhere in the US. Um, why do I say full sun? Well, I'm in the desert in Arizona and these trees right here, they take 120 degrees direct sun all day. Uh, winter time, how, cold, how much cold can they take? Um, they can take in the teens guys, no issues at all here in the winter time. The coldest temperature that I've had here in my area is 19 degrees. These guys are deciduous trees, so they can take a lot of cold. The only problem that you may experience during the winter time is if your ground freezes. I don't have any experience growing them in areas where the ground freezes, so I have I cannot really tell you anything about it. All I know is that these guys, they will take temperatures in the teens and uh, no problems at all during the winter time. Full sun, full winter. How much easier does it get? Um, now this guy's here, textbook answer is four to six feet tall. Um, but I've had bonanza peaches in the ground for over three years now. If you look on my right, right here, this is a fully grown bonanza peach. This tree right here, I think has been in the ground for about three and a half years, maybe four years. I don't really remember. Anytime, anyways, when I first put it in the ground, it looked just like this one right here. They don't really care about what soil uh, they're in. They don't care about anything. As long as the hole that you're planting in drains the water. That is the only requirement, guys. Now, let's talk about its root system. Peach trees in general, they have a top root system that goes straight down in the ground. You can see this bread root tree right here. You can see the top root right here. That's huge, guys. So that top root can easily grow 10, 15 feet in the ground eventually, once the tree is fully matured. Um, so when planting them in the ground, the main thing you have to keep in mind, you don't want to damage this top root. If you break this top root, you may kill the tree. Now, this is a bread root tree. So what that means is, this tree right here was not growing in a container. This tree was growing in the ground somewhere in the US where it gets colder than it does here in Arizona. And they grow them throughout the year because they grow faster in the ground. And then during the winter time, when they go dormant, they lose all their leaves, they dig them up. Then they ship them across the US and people buy them bird root like this. So if you have a bird root tree, specifically a bonanza peach or any other peach for that matter, this is what it's gonna look like. Now, how is this possible? It's possible because the tree is dormant. The tree is not actually uh, taking up hardly any energy and it can last a very long time just like this. So you can do anything to the tree. You can break the tap root, you can destroy the tree and the tree will not react to it until growing season. So this is the main reason why we don't like, um, we don't like selling uh, but, uh, bird root trees because the chances of people killing them are very high. Normally on a regular bird root tree you're gonna have a taller canopy so my recommendation when planting a bird root tree is to chop it at least 25 to 50 percent like you've seen me do to uh, other plants when transplanting them because the root system supporting that canopy is no longer there and you will not see any issues until your plant wakes up during the growing season in the spring. Now this tree right here, you can see the canopy is very small. I don't need to chop it. Now you can see also that this tree right here is grafted. This is where it's been, uh, it was grafted right here. So this is the rootstock right here. This tree right here was probably grown from a cutting or it was grown from seed. Then they let that grow and then when the tree got big enough, they chopped it. They got a branch for an actual bonanza pitch like this one and they grafted it, it onto this rootstock right here. In the future, once I make rootstock, um, I can show you how to graft peaches. It's very easy, guys. Now, how to plant it? The first thing you need is pick an area, guys. Remember, this trees here take the full sun all day, so any areas where it takes the full sun, it's fine. Now, you don't wanna plant this, guys, in the shade. Um, I, you see these holes right here? I have pomegranate trees in here and in the summer they got way too big and that last one specifically over there was shading that bonanza peach way too much and you can tell out of all the peaches that I have here if you want to back off so you can actually see all three of them 
You can see that one over there is actually smaller than the other two over here. And the reason for that is because that one over there in the summer was actually getting really shaded. So when picking a spot, remember full sun all day, anywhere in the US, as long as you water. Now, the second thing you need, you need to pick an area. Dig your hole. Obviously you want the hole to be bigger than this uh, root ball right here. Now, you wanna check for drainage, guys. The drainage is the most important thing you can do for your plants. And uh, this area right here will drain the water within six hours. I can fill up that hole all the way to the top and within six hours that, that hole will drain the, uh, the water. So ideally you're looking for 24 hours or less. If that hole takes over a day to drain the water or several days, that is not good drainage, guys. So you need to fix that before planting your tree in the ground. Now you have to remember this bonanza peach, it has a taproot system that goes straight down in the ground. So obviously you don't want any pipes running underneath here because that taproot will actually penetrate uh, like a sewage line or anything like that if it does not get the water that it requires over time. Anyways guys, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna dig your hole bigger than the root ball and then I'm gonna dry fit it in there. So that seems to be about right. Now for peaches in general, you don't wanna bury the crown because peaches, they do not root that well from cuttings. So if you bury it, this is the crown of your tree. This is where your tree will actually um, taking oxygen. Um, so you don't wanna bury it with actually dirt because that's gonna block the oxygen in there and that's gonna stay wet and that may rot the trunk. So when planting in the ground, you wanna keep the crown of the tree maybe about half an inch to an inch higher than the actual level of the soil. Eventually it may settle a little bit, but we're gonna prevent that by actually compacting the soil around the root ball. Now, I'm gonna put the, my tree right here in the hole, and that seems to be about the right uh, um, height for my tree. And then the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tuck all the roots in, down in the hole, I don't want them sticking out. And then I'm gonna get dirt, and I'm gonna dump it in there, just like that. So, let me get my shovel real quick. So what you want to do, you want to layer it. So you wanna put dirt around the tree in layers. And then as you're actually filling up the sides, you wanna get in there, you want to compact the soil all the way around to prevent settling because uh, you don't want any air gaps in there and you don't want your tree to actually settle too much in the ground so by compacting it as you're filling up the hole it makes it a lot easier just like that just compact it down so that way the soil is not gonna settle down on you. Now let me go ahead and put another layer of dirt in there. All right guys. So this is another layer. So I'm gonna get in there and gently, you don't wanna break up the roots. These are little hair roots right here. This is where your tree is actually drinking the water from. It's not drinking the water from these huge roots right here. So you don't wanna break up those little roots in there. Just gently get your fingers in there and compact everything down. It's really hard to mess this up. So don't overthink it, just get it done. When you overthink everything, that's when you fail because you overdo everything. I, I know I did it when I first started. So let me get some more dirt in there.
and there it is guys and that is that simple and you know I did it right because I have other bonanza peaches in the ground that have been grown for a few years now without any issues at all now one thing uh, one thing to keep in mind is to keep the crown above the ground half an inch above an inch if a little taller that's fine a little shorter that's fine just keep an eye on it over the next few weeks to make sure that it doesn't settle down because you don't want the dirt to pile up against the trunk just like that because if that stays too wet it may rot the trunk and also you want the tree to be able to breathe so the next thing you got to keep in mind which i forgot to tell you is when you plant it in the ground the area that's going to get the most sun you don't want the graft point to actually be facing that way because your tree is not that strong this tree was not growing in arizona this came from somewhere else where it doesn't get as hot so you want the graft point which is this one here you want facing away from the hottest side of whatever the tree is facing so that area over there is the west side of my property so during midday and late afternoon the hottest part of the day the sun is blasting this area right here so i don't want the graft point to be facing that way i want it to be facing away from it where it's going to get shaded naturally over time once the tree gets older it doesn't matter and eventually these two parts right here they're going to fuse over and then you won't even be able to tell which one was grafted because they're going to look just like a single trunk now let's talk about watering guys so my soil is moist right now it has water in there i don't need to water this right now second reason why you don't need to water right now your tree has no leaves on it right now so your tree is not transpirating or sweating so it's not drinking hardly any water and the soil here is during the winter time it's taking even longer to dry so i don't need to water this right now now let's say your soil is super dry right now yeah go ahead give me some water do you need to flood this whole area no you don't because your plant's not going to benefit from that flooding now the only thing that the flooding will do is if you're not sure that you compacted soil enough then you can go ahead and flood the area to um, uh, speed up the process of settling and then the, whatever areas are settled down then you can go ahead come back the next day or the day after and just uh, uh, you know put more dirt in there um, now the next thing to keep in mind guys is do you need to put any, uh, any fertilizers in here and do you need to do anything special that depends if your soil has no organic material in there I always recommend to put 50% compost and 50% native soil and that's all you need you don't need anything else uh the reason i didn't put any compost in here is because i because i had another pomegranate tree in this area and uh, this soil is being uh, fertilized with compost you can see all the bugs in there um with compost and i've been watering this area for a few years now so it's very rich in nutrients so i don't need anything else um now how to water this plant remember the plants have some of the leaves right now so you don't need to water that often so I would say every few days come out here get some soil in your hand and feel it and see does it feel moist does it feel wet or does it feel dry now if it's really dry give your plant some water how often to water it well that depends on the temperatures guys so you're gonna water it soak it really good um, I don't know how long that's gonna take you that depends how much water you, you give your plant and then every day come out and check out the soil and see how how long it takes to dry about six inches the best way to do that is to actually go away from the trunk and then dig a hole in there and see how far down it takes to dry about six to ten inches and that is exactly how often you will water the first summer now you understand that this plant has a taproot system so that taproot system will keep going down this, uh, into the soil deeper and deeper every single year so as your plant gets older and established in the ground a year plus from now you're going to have to deep water this plant how do you deep water you're gonna get your hose you're gonna put it away from the trunk you're gonna turn it on very slowly and you're gonna water for maybe one two three four hours drainage will dictate how long you will need to water my soil has a lot of clay so it takes the water a little longer to actually drain to the soil so to give you an idea how how long I water this peaches right here here in Arizona my soil takes about six hours to drain the water 
I water for about six hours every five days or so because every five days or so it, ta it takes about five days for that soil to dry up about one to two feet now as the tree get, uh, as the trees get uh, the trees get older then the root system will probably go even deeper into the ground so I probably won't have to water that often because it will take even longer to dry even deeper into the soil but at that point I'm probably gonna have to water longer so deep water and you want to water as long as it takes to fully saturate the water uh, the soil and uh, water the water the plant was actually drinking the water so several feet below the soil and then you have to let the soil dry in between water and you cannot keep the soil uh, wet guys the root system of your plant breathes in oxygen just like you do and every time that you water the soil the water will displace the oxygen away from the root ball drowning your plant now plants are adapted to take some drowning the problem is when you don't let them breathe in between the way you do that is by letting the soil dry in between watering especially top root trees like this you have to let them dry in between now for the first summer remember shallow water because even if you soak the whole area for hours and hours during the summer you're still gonna have to water this, this little root ball right here even if everything around there is soaking wet because the plant has no roots in the soil to actually drink the water yet so it doesn't matter if it's soaking wet it won't be able to drink it so you're gonna come out here you're gonna water right here around the trunk for the first summer second year around then you can go ahead and start deep watering um, I'll have another video in the future where I explain more details how often and how long to water your plants but for now keep that in mind guys water until the soil is saturated let it dry a few inches and water it again as your tree gets older you're gonna have to let the soil dry even deeper into the soil and that will take longer so you're gonna have to water longer but then you won't have to water as often and that applies for all plants that have a taproot system just like this one um, let's see what else yeah fruit wise this guy is here in Arizona they flower very early spring depending on the temperatures and then the fruit sets and usually ripens in the summer now the first year it may flower but a lot of those flowers may not get pollinated and even if they do your fruits may fall off because the plant has no roots in the soil it's not strong enough to hold its fruit so it will concentrate on growing roots more than fruit so the first summer don't expect anything guys if you get one that's fine but if you don't get any that's normal now if it does hold some fruit should, it should you take it off in my experience I haven't noticed any difference uh, a lot of people will say the tree is putting a lot of energy into the fruit instead of the root system so if you're worried about your tree performing uh, long term I will just you know thin it out and take, don't let it fruit for the first uh, year and then so that way the plant concentrates on growing roots first before fruiting now the second year around that's when you're gonna get some fruit but then remember birds are gonna eat them birds like fruits that have bright colors the peaches on these guys are actually yellow and red and they're huge um, and they're very sweet so um, yeah you're gonna have issues with birds especially if not many people in your area have fruit trees uh, let's see what else um, okay. dwarf peaches in container growing guys will this tree grow in a container the answer is yes and no so this plant has a taproot system and it goes straight down in the ground so the reason they don't do well in containers long term is because once the taproot system hits the bottom of that container they get stunted and they don't grow much they grow very slowly extremely slowly so if you want that kind of performance out of your peach tree then go ahead and put it in a container now if you want your tree to actually grow and be happy and give you tons of fruit and, and give you 100% performance put it in the ground they don't do well in containers long term will they grow in a container yes they will survive will they perform well no they're not how do I know that because I have been growing them for a few years now so any plants that have a taproot system they don't do well in containers long term and this is the main reason why they sell this guys bird root and that's the main reason why this they grow this guys in the ground and they dig them up and sell them because they will grow way faster in the ground than they will ever do in a container so if you're trying to grow a peach tree because you don't have much space and you want to keep it in a container I don't recommend getting uh, getting this uh, peach tree and growing in a container because it's just not gonna do that well for you 
Now, if you have the space, like this space right here, I mean, they don't take much room, guys. Um, then put it in the ground. So, and that is, uh, that is how you grow a bonanza peach, guys. Just to summarize, they take full sun all day. They're not planting in the shade. They will take the winter temperatures. The coldest I have tested them is 19 degrees, but I know they can take colder than that. Now, the only thing that I don't know is how much, um, if your ground freezes, how much of that they can take. I'm not sure, because I, I, I really don't know. Um, and um, let's talk about feeding your plant. Every few months, what I like to do, I get a layer of compost, about, I would say, maybe uh, four to six inches thick, and then I spread it around the plant. And then I get mulch. Mulch can be anything, it can be straw, it can be leaves, just like this. Um, and then I put it on top, like a really thick layer. The reason I put mulch on top of compost is because you're not feeding your plant directly when you put compost in the ground or warm poop or whatever poop. What you're actually doing, you're feeding the living organisms in the soil. They eat that up and then they poop. Now the poop is small enough when mixed with water and it reaches the root system of your plant, then your plant will be able to absorb the nutrients from there. Until then, your plant will not be able to eat it. So, that is the main reason why you want to keep that compost moist. Here in Arizona, we get extremely hot during the summer. The evaporation rate is extremely high. So you wanna do everything possible that you can do to keep that soil moist. And the only way that I can do, he do that here locally is by putting mulch on top. And then what I do, that mulch and compost will break down over time and then I just keep layering it. I put another layer of compost, another la la layer of mulch. Do you have to mix it up? No, you don't because everything makes it itself by itself. So you don't need to mix anything up. Just layer it and you're good to go. And I probably do that maybe two to three times a year. And I do the same thing for all my plants. And I have peaches in the ground, I got pomegranates, I got mango trees, I got longan, I got avocado plants, I got bamboo plants, I got everything in the ground and everything, it's the same. So don't overthink it. This is one of the easiest plants to grow here in our area. Um, if you're planting this in the summer, and this was in a container, root it, then the process is the same, guys. Just take it out of the pot and put it in the, in, into the ground. Um, I have a lot of them in containers right now, and they will be ready probably in a, about three months from now. Are they going to be bigger than this? No, they're not, but they're going to be fully rooted in that container. I don't keep them in containers long term because they just don't grow that well. Uh, will they survive in the container? Yes, they will. But remember, they're not going to perform that well in that container. That is just a temporary housing for them until they find new homes. Anyways, guys, that is it. This was how to grow a bonanza peach and how to actually uh, plant one. If you like, uh, if you like my videos, guys, uh, comment below, like the video, and then uh, I'll see you next time.